So I want to go over, before I start the practice quiz, I want to go over all the homework that we've done this week with three e-learning days now and no school on Monday because it was President's Day. Um, I don't know if I've ever had a, a day of or a week of school where we're only going to be probably going just one day. But uh, anyways, section 2.3, uh, the reflections homework that we did Friday um, is due, was due yesterday. So hopefully you've already got that turned in. The 2.4 rotations homework that we did Tuesday and then finished up yesterday, just a little bit yesterday, that's due um, today. Okay, so all the rotations homework problems are due today. I've extended that deadline to 4 p.m. Um, just to give you a little extra time to work on it. Um, the transformations packet that we looked at cl in class yesterday, that is due when class starts tomorrow. Um, I've, I'm almost positive that we'll be back in class tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go over the, the transformations packet before you guys take your quiz over transformations. So. Um, I got to go over that with you because it's a worksheet. Today's practice quiz um, and the geometry L.12 IXL is due 2.30 Monday. Um, I'll probably have you just hang on to these practice quiz papers um, until, I mean, I guess I could collect them Friday because you're not, well, I'm, I'm going to be collecting lots of work papers. I don't know, but hang on to the work paper. Um, I'll collect it from you guys. Um, if you want to post it to this Google Classroom spot, the assignment, you can do that, but I'll still um, collect paper copies from you guys um, either tomorrow or maybe just Monday when it's due. And then the geometry L.12 IXL is due 2.30 Monday. So um, I just noticed I spelled quiz wrong. Can't type. Um, and then we have a math quiz tomorrow over um, congruence, which was actually section 2.1, the really easy section. And then 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4 are um, translations, reflections, and rotations. So that's what's due. Um, and we have a quiz tomorrow over everything. So let's go ahead and get started with our practice quiz. So what you guys need to have is a blank sheet of paper out in front of you um, and pencil, obviously. And you can write down the problems we're working on. I'll tell you exactly what you need to write down for each of them. So there's no question in what work you need to show. Mr. Bright. Yes. How many questions are there on the practice quiz? There's usually 10, but I took one of the questions off. So there's only going to be nine. Um, but we'll you can number them one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, because the one I took off was number seven. That's why it's not assigned on big ideas, because big ideas wouldn't let me just take a problem off like I can with homework, because this is a quiz. So number one says form two congruent pairs of rectangles. So I have three options down here to choose from. Rectangle C, D, and E. Can you guys tell me which of these rectangles is congruent with rectangle A? Rectangle e. C. Which one? E, E, D. E. I've D. heard C, D, and E. Yeah, D, D, it's D, 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 yep. D. It's gotta be D because to be congruent, um, the rectangles have to have the same dimensions. Everything's got to be, the side length's got to be congruent. Of course, the angle measures are 90 degrees, so we know they're congruent. And so if rectangle A is eight foot by six foot, the rectangle that's congruent with it also has to be eight foot by six foot. So what you'll put for number one is put A is congruent to, there's your congruent symbol, D. Okay, so we've already got D out of here. Um, which one is congruent uh, to rectangle B? C, 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 from the way rectangle B looks, but that still results in a congruent rectangle. Um, 
rectangle E is eight by nine and neither one of these rectangles were eight by nine. So we're not going to use rectangle E. And just those are, so that's what you have to have written down for number one. Everyone good? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. All right, number two, they want us to translate this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, every time they ask us to do this, I'm going to do it on my iPad. What you guys are going to do is you're gonna help me with the arrow notation. Okay, so the points, the three points on this um, triangle, we'll start with the, the left point, the point on the left, that's negative two, six. So write negative two, six down. You want okay, us to I'm, put any variables with it, like A, B, or C, or just leave uh, it like? If you want to, but they didn't letter it, so I wasn't going to letter it. Uh -huh. So yeah, you can if you want. If you want to make up A, B, C, that's that's completely fine. Um, then I'm just going to go clockwise uh, to the top point here, which is at four seven, and then down to the bottom point, which is at three three. Okay. And then I'm going to use arrow notation. So I want you to draw three arrows on your work paper. And it says translate it four units left and five units down. So if I move four units left. You gotta subtract four. From which one? X. X, X. okay. So I'm- And maybe then I minus make... five from Y. Okay, so I'm gonna say maybe I didn't make my arrows big enough. Um, so you have to subtract four from the X. And then if we're moving down, subtract five from the why? Good. Okay. And so let's go ahead and do that. Um, Caleb, what is the neck? What is the negative two six point going to become? Negative six. And what about the y variable? One. One. Okay. Um, Caroline, what about four seven? What's that going to become? Um, zero two. Good. What are the next one? And Max, you can do the next one. Um, negative one and uh, negative two. Got it. Okay. So I'm not going to question. I know you guys can do this without the arrow notation. I just want to make sure when you have a question on the quiz tomorrow that says, what is this point going to become? Use arrow notation. I just want to make sure you guys can do that. So now we'll go ahead and do those three points should give me, let's see, negative six, one right there, zero, two on the y-axis and negative one, negative two. Should give me the same exact triangle, but moved four units left and five units down. If the triangle looks different, that means I moved one of the points too far or too little. Um, if I can get it to connect, that'd be great, but it keeps not wanting to do that. There we go. Definitely. Works, yeah. Can you go back to question one real quick? Question one? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Thank you. We had to tell which rectangle was congruent to rectangle A, it was rectangle D, and which rectangle was congruent to rectangle B, it was rectangle C. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so far on our work paper, everything that I've highlighted, you should have written down. You don't need to draw any of the coordinate planes or anything like that. So we've got this highlighted and this highlighted. Okay, let's move on to number three. Number three wants us to describe the translation. So it tells us what kind of transformation it is. From the red figure, that's important. That means we're starting here to the blue figure. Up three over five. Up three over five. Okay, so let's check that. Let's look at two of the uh, points here. This point and this point would go up three. And then you said over five, what direction? Right, sorry. Right, okay. Yep, and then that's going to be the same for all four of the point, uh, points on this quadrilateral. So the translation is, um, well, why don't we say that it's right, or we'll say five units right. How about this? This is what you're going to write. <laughs> now, I, I can't I can't click on those boxes because this is a notability. So we're going to say translation. We're going to say write five. 
and up three. If you said up three, right five, and you mixed up the order and you had these, like that's that's fine. I don't really care. Um, if you said that you wanted to say X plus five and Y plus three, that's also fine. I'd be okay with that too. As long as you have the word or abbreviation trans or translation, if you wanna write the whole thing out. That way we know what kind of, uh, what kind of transformation it was. Trans, not standing for transformation, but obviously for translation. Okay, number four. <clears throat> the vert vertices of the triangle are negative four, negative three, zero, negative five, and two, negative one. Draw the figure and its reflection over the x-axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot these points. A is at negative four, negative three. Are we going to use arrow notation for this? Yeah, that's what that's what you guys are going to write down. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go ahead and get the triangle drawn real quick. Zero, negative five. And then two, negative one. So this is what the triangle looks like after we've drawn it. And so what we'll do is we'll write down A. You don't have to write A if you don't want. Negative four, negative three. B, zero, negative five, and C, two, negative one. Yes, and then we're gonna use arrow notation to tell what the new coordinates would be. So on a top arrow, I need to write what's actually going or what's actually happening. So someone tell me, other than Caleb York, who's told me the last couple of times, what happens when you reflect something over the x-axis? You the do y, the y, y variable changes. negative. The y variable the y changes. Negative. There you go. So x comma negative y. The reason I'm writing the x down, even though nothing happens to the x, is I just want to make sure I know it stays in the same spot. Because if it was a rotation, I would be flipping them. So writing x negative y shows me that I'm not flipping here. Just taking the opposite of the y coordinate. So when I do that, negative 4, positive 3. On the quiz, would you like count off if we didn't write the like, I guess, um, the X and negative Y? Yes. Okay. Because that's part of the error. Yeah, you have to write that way. I know you know what's going on. So if you make a mistake, I know that you, at least you knew what you were doing, right? That's like showing your work. So this is like yeah. your work, and then this will be your answer. Okay. okay. Um, Caitlin, while well, uh, since you're. I mean, um, yeah, Max, what's up? All right, yeah. Um, on the test, is do we have to do every single problem error notation? Oh, no, not every one. Just the ones that it specifically asks for. And it will only be one point instead of three. And how many of those do you think we'll have about error notation? I don't know. Probably anywhere from two to four. Two to four? All right. Yeah. Some of them you'll just be asked to graph it on the coordinate plane. Some of them you'll be asked to use error notation. And some of them you'll be asked to explain what kind of transformation it was. Okay. Or if maybe a sequence of two, like we looked at yesterday. Caitlin, what happens when I reflect zero negative five over the x axis? It becomes zero five. Good. Okay. And Ashton Castillo, what about two negative one? Uh, two one. All right, so I'm going to reflect that. And over the uh, x axis, so the c prime was right there at 2, 1. Okay. And then the b prime, why am I changing colors, was up here at 0, 5. And the a prime, we said, was. Should be negative four, three. Yep, negative four, three. And they're mirror images of one another. Okay. So this is what you're writing down for on your work paper. You don't have to write the coordinate plane down. <clears throat> Number five. Number five says you reflect this trapezoid over the y-axis and then translate it 
six units down and four units right. So it wants to know what are the coordinates after I do that. I don't need to draw anything on the coordinate plane. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I don't need to because I have the coordinates and I'm going to just going to use arrow notation. So we have A, which is, what's the coordinate for A? One, one. Okay, what about one, B? One, one. One, one five. One, five. One five. Okay. What about C? Five five. And what about D? Three one. Awesome. Three one. Great. All right. So we got four arrows. On the top arrow, we're going to write what happens when you reflect something over the y-axis. Didn't we, no, oh, we did the x-axis last Negative time. Negative x comma y. Okay. Just takes the opposite of the x-coordinate because if you're reflecting over the y-axis, it's gonna switch from positive x to negative x, but the, the actual shape isn't gonna move up or down. So it's not gonna affect the y-coordinate at all. So our a prime is going to be- and I'll Negative just one, one. Negative one, one. Okay, what about our b prime? Negative one, five. C prime? Negative five, five. And D prime? Negative three, one. Negative three, one. Okay. Now we need to draw four more arrows because there's another transformation happening here. And then would it be X minus six comma Y plus four? When you move down, you subtract six from the X. Yep, so X minus six. And then when you move, um, it's, whoa, it's, whoa, 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 whoa. So they, they, they wrote it's it backwards. Y minus six. Yeah, it should be, okay, so X, what are they, when they move it left or right, they're moving it four units to the right. So X plus, plus or minus, four. plus four, okay. Then we should have Y minus six. Yeah, they, I don't know if they meant to do that, but they completely flip flop those on me. So thank you guys for noticing that. So we're going to go ahead. Three, negative five. Good. Somebody else want to do the next one? Me. Go ahead. Uh, three, negative one. Good. And the next one, somebody else? Negative one, negative one. Good. Negative one, negative one. And the last one? One, negative five. And we have our answer because it just wanted to know what the double prime coordinates were. And so we have them. So if you write this whole thing down, you've got your work and the answers that they wanted. All right, number six. If I'm going too fast, again, I'm gonna be posting this video so you guys can go back and, and review anything you need to. I just wanna make sure we get it all done before class is over. It wants us to rotate this rectangle 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So again, I'm gonna use arrow notation here. Um, I'll start with the top left point. The top left point is at negative four, six. Going clockwise, the top right point is at one, six. The bottom right point is at one, three. And the bottom left point is at negative four, three. Then I need four arrows. And what the, um, the thing, would it be y comma negative x? So when you rotate 90 degrees clockwise, yes, you do take the opposite of the x coordinate and then you flip it. Oops, actually go this way. So that the y coordinate goes where the x coordinate was. So take the opposite of the x. If it's 90 degrees counterclockwise, you take the opposite of the y and then flip it. So yes, this is correct, Ashton, opposite of the X, and that's what we're gonna write. Y comma negative X, because that shows that Wait, we question. have flipped it. Go ahead. 
if you did it counterclockwise, it would be x comma negative y. Um, no, it'd just be if you did ninety degrees counterclockwise, that would be, be negative y x. Negative oh. y, yeah. Um, if you said x, <sighs> trying to get a comma there. If you said, uh, I think you said x negative y, that's actually a x axis reflection. Because okay. on an x axis reflection, you take the opposite of the y, but you don't flip anything. So because uh, we're flipping it, the y has to go first. Okay. Mr. White? Yes. Um, so it is, is when you reflect over the, y, the line y equals negative x, do you flip both the y and x and then make them both negative? Nope, just flip them. So if you reflect over the line y equals x, which is the probably the least talked about transformation. Wait, no, y equals negative x. Oh, y equals negative x. Um, yeah, I think you would flip them and make them both negative. Because now instead of reflecting over this line, you're reflecting over that line. So I think, yeah, I think you're right. I'd have to double check myself on that here after class, but I think you're right, Nuche. Yeah, on the I Excel. Is it on one of the, oh, it's on the IXL. Well, there you go. For those of you that have already started the IXL, then, then yeah. So reflecting over the line Y equals negative X, which is this negatively sloped line here, then you flip them and make them both negative. So good to know. All right, so my new coordinates then, take the opposite of the X and flip it. We got six positive four. And we've got six negative one and three negative one and three positive four. So that's what you guys need to write down. And then I will graph this to show what it looks like. Six, four. Oops, that's five, four. Six negative one, three negative one. Why am I doing? There we go. And then three, four. There we go. Yep. It's been rotated 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, number seven. We're skipping number seven. It's blank. There's nothing there. So next one is number eight. No, wait, there's not, there isn't, no, you're right. Sorry, there isn't there. Why am I skipping number, why did I say to skip number seven? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was just too complicated. There was too many different parts. So we are skipping number seven. So I had my notes that I didn't do number seven. I thought I completely erased it when I noticed it was blank, but they just put it down here. So we are not doing number seven. We're gonna skip to number eight. A parallelogram in a coordinate plane is translated, rotated, then reflected. Which of the following statements about the parallelogram and its final image is true? Corresponding angles are congruent. Corresponding sides have different lengths. Opposite sides are no longer parallel in each figure and the parallelograms are congruent. So let me ask you this, when you translate is that a congruent transformation or a similar transformation? Congruent. Okay. Congruent. What about when you rotate it? Congruent. What about when you reflect congruent. it? It's, they're all congruent, congruent. right? Congruent. Yeah. The, we haven't even talked about similar transformations yet. And there's only one of those, the dilation. So regardless of how many times I reflect it, rotate it, translate it, it's gonna result in the exact same shape. It's just been moved somehow, right? So let's think about what we know about not only parallelograms, but congruent shapes. We said in, um, we said in section 2.1, we had a definition of this, that congruent shapes, all the corresponding sides and all the corresponding angles were equal or congruent, okay? So we know that's true. So when it says the corresponding angles are congruent, that's absolutely true. We didn't change any of the angle measures because if you change the angle measure, you change the shape. 
a similar transformation doesn't even change the angle measures. It only changes so, the side um, lengths. Because if you change the angle measures, now you've made it a different shape than what it was. It's no longer a parallelogram. It's now going to be just some quadrilateral, okay? So the angle measures never get messed with. Do you want us to just put like A, B, C, or D? I want you to actually write it down. So write corresponding angles are congruent. Are the corresponding sides gonna have different lengths? Yes. No, no. No, 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 no. They, if they had different lengths, they'd oh. make a different shape, wouldn't it? So that one's out. Yeah, we know that um, <clears throat> from our definition of congruent shapes that the corresponding sides are also gonna be congruent or equal. So they're not gonna have different side lengths. Okay. Now it says corresponding sides. Like I'm not saying that this side and this side have to be the same length, but when I rotate it, reflect it, translate it, these two sides correspond, they have to be the same length still. Are the opposite sides um, no longer going to be parallel? No. No. That one's no. out. Because then it yeah. wouldn't be a parallelogram and you again have changed the shape. The sides are still going to be parallel. Will the parallelograms be congruent? Yes. They yes. better be. Yeah. yeah, they better be. So, yeah. so write down corresponding angles are congruent and the parallelograms are congruent. We don't need this. I don't know why they put this coordinate plane here. Um, there's nothing to draw on it. Um, if is it okay if we don't put the the in the parallelograms or can do it? You don't need to put the box. No, just write the just so write that. The, the the before parallelograms because I already wrote parallelograms without the the. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, you don't need the word the. Okay, number nine. Acute angles of this right isosceles triangle are congruent. Okay, so these acute angles are congruent. The way that we show two angles are congruent, by the way, is we use little angle markers. So if they were different, I'd make one of them have one and one of them have two to show that they're different. But if they both have the same number of angle markers, that means they're the exact same size. And then this one's obviously different. This one's a right angle. It says it's a right isosceles triangle, which means these two sides are the same and this one's different. We do the same thing with side lengths. We use the same number of angle marks. If the angles are the same, we use the same number of, I think they're called tick marks on a, on a, side, on a side like this. We use the same number of tick marks or I could just not put any tick marks on this one to show that it's different from the other two. You rotate this triangle 135 degrees counterclockwise. I have not shown you guys how to do 135 degrees. We know 90 degrees, we know 180 degrees, we know 90 degrees the other way, which is 270 degrees, but we have not done 135 degrees. So what's important about this problem isn't the fact that we're rotating at 135 degrees. What's important is the fact that we're rotating it because when we rotate it, it's gonna result in a congruent triangle. So when it says, what are the angle measures of, the each, of each acute angle after the rotation? It's gonna be the exact same angle measures that they were before the rotation. So how many degrees are there in a triangle? 180. Okay. Take out the 90 degrees for the right angle. What's that going to leave me with? 90. Okay. And then how do I figure out what each of the acute angles are? 45. Divide by two. Divide by two. There you go. Yeah, divide by two because you got to split it two ways. Okay. So you get 45 degrees. That is going to be the answer to the first question. 45. And don't forget your degree symbol. We always put the degree symbol when we're talking about an angle measure. And then it says, what is the length of the two congruent sides after the rotation? Well, the same as what the length was before the rotation. So how long was this side before the rotation? Four units. Good. And the other one was also four. And so there's still going to be four. 
And then, so there's no label here. So anytime there's no label and we have to give a label for a side length, just put UN for units, just like they did. You, you don't have to write the whole word out, you can abbreviate. So we didn't actually have to rotate that triangle at all. They were just trying to throw you off. But when you rotate something, it, as we mentioned before, it doesn't change any of the angles or any of the sides. Number 10. You design a symmetric logo for a company. You draw half of the logo on the coordinate plane as shown, and then you reflect it over the X axis to complete the logo. Which of these designs uh, is uh, gonna be that same logo? What do you guys B. think? Which of who said B? A. Me. Okay. So I heard, B. so B. What about C? B. No, because the uh, green triangle's over the top of the blue triangle. Yeah, so in the original picture, the blue triangle was dominating. the. It was over the green triangle. So you can't have the green triangle now be over the blue. So you're right. So it can't be C. It's obviously not D either. It's not A. Why is it not A? Because in the picture, it shows like both of them just coming together, not like it showing it going through, like the blue side goes over the green side. Gotcha, it's not meeting in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, they've got- It the can't be D because in D, they're reflecting across the Y axis. That, hey, good point. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. So yeah, they reflected over the Y axis for, for um, D. And so they asked us to do the X axis. And so that's gotta be B. So this is what it's gonna look like. You guys can just write B down for number 10. That's a nice logo. Did you know it's, it looks like the Big Ideas Math logo? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if you, you subconsciously, you guys have seen this one before. I must have seen that before. Huh? Sadly. <laughs> Sadly. So it looks something like this. You don't have to draw it. I'm just, I, I'm feeling very artistic this morning. You're good at drawing. Do you, think we'll, do you think we'll go to school tomorrow? I think so. I, I believe that even if we didn't go to school, I believe the policy in our um, school board policy is that we can only have three consecutive e-learning days in a row. After that, we'd have to make it up at the uh, end of the school year. So if we so don't go to school, like snow day tomorrow. Yeah, I, that would I, be I think. Awesome. I hope we don't go to school tomorrow. So we won't have okay. e learning tomorrow. I, okay. as far as I know, school just give us a day off. Yeah, as yeah, far as I know, canceled, it's going to be a Friday. So, like, just give us the day off, honestly. Add on to the. They already the, gave you Monday off. You already had a three day weekend like, last week. So, they should just cancel it. Why not another? Why, why not? Exactly. Okay. So, if you missed, if you missed any of that, if you missed any of that, um, then. Uh, make sure you watch the video and finish the problems you didn't get written down. Um, if you were late signing in to class, this is our homework um, that we've had. So we did um, section 2.3, which was um, over reflections on Friday. That was due yesterday. So that needs to get turned in if you haven't turned that in. Um, 2.4 rotations homework is due today. I've extended the deadline to 4 p.m. The transformations packet that you guys got yesterday is due when class starts tomorrow. We're going to go over those questions before we take the quiz, which means there's a quiz Friday. I think you guys knew that, right? Which I showed you guys the lesson plans and I posted them on Google Classroom. There's a quiz over transformations on Friday, tomorrow, which is, I'm really hoping we are in school. Even if it's two, two hour delay, I'm really hoping because I'd rather have you guys take it on paper. Um, and then, so the practice quiz that we just finished, this is now done. You guys have completed that. What you need to do is- Oh, so we had nothing. Oh, I was gonna say, so we had nothing on like big ideas to do? Nothing on big ideas. Oh. So the okay. last big ideas homework that you had was 2.4, which is due today. Um, I am gonna collect all work papers tomorrow. 
So don't feel like you need to email me them or turn them in on Google Classroom um, unless you just feel like that's a good backup. Like that way you've got it, you know, if you take a picture of it, you got it. Um, but I'm gonna collect all those from you guys tomorrow. Um, your homework for today is the geometry. It's not eighth grade, it's not eighth grade math. Geometry L.12 IXL. It's gonna say congruence transformations mixed review. So it's gonna have um, translations, reflections, or rotations. And depending on how high up you get, um, as Nuche and Claire mentioned, it's gonna have some where maybe we haven't done it before. So you may have to get it wrong and then read, okay, so for Y equals negative X, I have to flip them and make them both negative, that kind of thing, which don't worry about that on the quiz. We're only gonna have problems on the quiz like the problems we've had on the homework and that we've talked about in the notes. So um, you have to get to a score of 80 on this IXL. Anything over 80, so an 81 or 99 is gonna earn you extra credit. Okay, so you can earn extra credit on this. Don't so throw Mr. away your Bright. practice quiz paper because we're going to be turning our practice quiz paper in. Mr. Bright, so yep. if we get 100% on it, do we get 100 uh, do we get 20 extra credit points? So it'll be two extra credit points. Oh, darn it. Yeah, because it, the uh, I'm, I'm dividing it by 10 and making this IXL worth eight points instead of 10. So if you get 100, then you get 10 out of eight. And so those two extra credit points, we're actually going to do some more IXLs, Caleb, this year, where I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say you only have to get to 80. And so those extra credit points could potentially add up just like the IXL extra credit points add up. So if you guys have questions on the transformations packet that's due tomorrow or on the 2.4 homework that's due today, or if you get stuck on an IXL question, screenshot that IXL question if you're not sure and um, send it to me and I can try to help you guys. So let me know if you need help, but you guys are officially... Dismissed. Bye. See you guys. See you later. You have to turn it Bye. to Excel when we get Bye. to the score. No, you do not. See you. Yeah, you don't have to take a picture of the IXL. Okay, bye. Yep, bye.